Hey YouTube, this is Bill. Uh, this is a part two of a video I had done on pairing up a pair of Bose S1 Pros wirelessly with a Sub 2. And got a lot of reviews from that video. A lot of people are interested in that setup. But some of the comments uh, stated correctly that um, Bose intended the setup to first go through the sub two and then out into the, the tops, the S1 Pros. And this would give you more clarity. It would relieve the, the uh, strain on the tops. You would be able to play it louder with more clarity. And I did a little research and uh, everybody agrees that's the way to do it. But um, I wasn't so sure because I, I didn't want to lose the Bluetooth control and if, if you went that way going through the sub first it meant either hard wiring from your source or using a mixer and again you're tied to cables with a mixer so i did a little research i wanted to keep keep the bluetooth capability and i found something i found an item it's right here it's called the microstation bt by personas and it's a Bluetooth module. And so this, this would alleviate the, the, the use of using a mixer. This is basically made for a desktop setup, computer desktop setup, which I can use also, but I wanted to try it with this particular setup. Also, this review is gonna be a little different from the previous one, is because as you see on the bottom here, holding up the S1 Pro is a smaller subwoofer than the S2 called the sub sub one instead of the sub two. And it's much lighter, it's much more portable, smaller in, in form factor. And again, some of the comments I received from the first video was the sub two was a mismatch for the uh, S1 Pros. And I, again, I agree. I never purchased the sub two separately to pair up with the S1 Pros. I had purchased it as part of a package with the Pro 32 system, which I did review recently. Uh, you can see that as one of my videos. So it was kind of like an experiment, but it was wonderful. I was shocked at, at the sound of two speakers, S1 Pros, connected Bluetooth wirelessly uh, with this Sub 2, and it just sounded great. So I purchased this Sub 1, because the sub two is just too much for a portable system. I, I can't, I took it out one time, 52 pounds, and it, it was just too much to load in my car. And it's, it would be a disadvantage, disincentive for me to, to throw two speakers in the car and wanting to go out, do something, a portable gig, but then I have to load up that sub two. So this sub is, in comparison, is only 36 pounds. And it's, and it's just, it's perfect. I, uh, I, I should have got this first, but the Bose Sub 2 is, is in a, never, not a league altogether though, so I'm not sorry I did get it. Now I have both. So I'm gonna play a little bit for you. Um, again, I'm not trying to do max volume. I just wanna hear the clarity. Again, the Sub 1, I'm, I'm, I am uh, very surprised about the low end. It's, it's nice and tight. It's, it's, it's a subwoofer. And again, this is kind of a lesson for me that you can't be, um, believe everything you hear on YouTube or, or internet forum chats because someone I had read stated that the sub one was about equal to the previous sub uh, um, B2 sub module from the L1 Model 2. So I kind of took that as, as truth and, and it's not true. That was, that was definitely false. This is much, I would say it's three times or four times the power of the B2 sub. And again, m many people paired up two B2s, but um, th this, is, this is much different. So again, a, a lesson for everybody. You gotta be careful who you listen to. Just because one reviewer says something, you can't take it as fact. Um, now, some people are uh, making the comment, should I go out and purchase this system? And personally, th this, is, this is pricey. This is a pricey system. 
Um, it's about $2,300. Each, each S1 Pro is $600. The Sub 1 uh, is $800. The Personas Bluetooth station that I just purchased, right here, $129. Uh, then you need a pole to mount it. That, that's about $30. And then you need a, a speaker stand. That's another $30 or $40. And then you need a bunch of cables, minimum of four cables. And I'm, I'm getting my cables on Amazon. Very good cables, approximately $20 each. So again, when you add up all that up, uh, $2,300 is, is not a cheap system. Plus, it's not so easy to set up. Now I'm, I'm dealing with two speakers, a subwoofer, two poles, a whole bunch of wires to connect. So my original system, the wireless system, is the one I'm going to the park with. This, that's the system I'm still gonna throw in the car and I would use it more often than this particular system. But I have to admit, this does sound better and it does have more headroom. So it depends on what, what you really need. But again, people are asking my advice, uh, should I get this? At this price, $2,300, um, I would probably go with the, the new Pro 8, which is $1,200 each times two. You got $2,400, only $100 more, and you're not dealing with the wires. You got your Bluetooth built in on the Pro 8, and you have two subwoofers. So I think that would definitely be the way to go. But... This system is, is definitely a choice for people like myself who already have one S1 Pro or maybe more, maybe they have two. Uh, it's some, it gives you, it's like a modular, assist, modular system. So in some situations, all you need is one S1 Pro for a very, like, like, like a little birthday. You just take your one S1 Pro on a stand and that's all you need. Or maybe you, a guitarist, an acoustic guitarist, will use a one S1 Pro as a monitor facing them and the second one behind them. Other, other performers playing backing tracks or acoustic um, percussion, light percussion, then they need that subwoofer. Again, the subwoofer isn't um, like the sub two, but it is plenty, it really is plenty. So let me show you what the downside here. I'm using my power station again. If you've seen my previous videos, no AC power. But the downside is all these cables. Um, it looks messy. I, four, like I said, four cables, it's, it's too much in my opinion. It does sound better, but I, I don't think it sounds that much better that I want to hassle with four cables and, and um, Bluetooth module, everything else. So here is the Personas, the Bluetooth module. And um, I'm gonna say it again, I'm very impressed with it. It has a nice, smooth gain knob, very smooth. It has a sub bypass switch, which I'm not using right now, but as a desktop system, that would be great, where you just press the button and you cut out the sub, and then you press it again to engage the sub and you can compare uh, off and on with with or without the sub. I, I love that feature. It it paired up instantly with all my devices. I had no issue. It has good distance. I'm walking around the, the home, no problem. It has a mute function, which is wonderful. So instead of uh, going to your phone or behind the speaker, you can you have another option to mute your whole system with one press. So again, it's very nice. I have it mounted to this pole. I don't know if this is available anymore. I got this a while back. It's called uh, Stage Ninja. It's made to hold uh, a tablet, and I kind of uh, rigged it to hold the, the Bluetooth module. That, that Stage Ninja, uh, that was kind of expensive. It was like 50 or $60 back when I bought it. I had to add some, some foam padding because it didn't actually quite fit. So I had to add something to, to make it a little snug. Again, it's not the, the, the most sturdy or best mounting, but I didn't want to put it on the subwoofer with, with vibration. And I really don't want to put something like this on the floor 
especially if I'm going outdoors to play uh, with dirt. So uh, this this mounting is is pretty pretty good. Okay, um, so again the downside before we had a cable we didn't I'm sorry we didn't have a cable it was a wireless setup but now here you see uh, one more XLR cable 15 feet or 20 feet across one more thing for someone to trip on so again that's for uh, individuals to decide uh, which system they prefer I found out about the personas microstation Bluetooth module I found out about it on this website called audio science review and the person doing the review named Amir is sounds like he's an engineer he really gives a very in-depth review of, of whatever he's reviewing so and he gave this unit a a good thumbs up so it's definitely worth a read let's see what else I can show you from that here's the conclusion finally we have a decently designed Bluetooth adapter with balanced output bonus items balanced volume control sub and headphone output um, and then this is the most important. I am happy to recommend the Personas Microstation. So again, that's a good read, and he, he really knows his, thing, his stuff. Okay, I think we're ready for a little sound demo. My dB meter. I'm not going to push this. I'm not trying to show max dB right now. I've, I've done that with other videos. I just, at this point, I just want to show clarity, how it sounds, nice and tight, good low end, Beautiful highs from your S1 Pros. And I'm gonna reset this. This is a, um, a tune that I created from GarageBand. You might've heard it from other videos I've done. And again, I don't wanna do any copyright infringement. I have all kinds of tunes I wish I could play in these demonstration videos, but I don't want any trouble. So again, this is something that I created. It's my second GarageBand creation. I'm gonna reset the max. DB, and we're gonna hear something. Seven point four, very clean sound. Again, I don't know if you can hear that quality even with headphones. Uh, the microphone I'm using to tape this is not very good. It's from my iPad, the the cheapest you can get. But right here in person in the home, and it is a very large listening area. Uh, I'm playing with cathedral ceilings that go up, 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 and the and the space is huge. And this system fills it. It fills it with clarity. And again, uh, I didn't have this anywhere near maximum volume. And we're talking about 97.4. Deep bass. The bass was, was very tight and deep. All you really need. So this subwoofer is very, very impress, impressive. That's the sub one. It, it matches up with the Pro 32 unit or the S1 Pros. Okay, hope you enjoyed this particular video. And if anybody is in the market for this type of system, again, you would have to decide the wireless system or going with the Bluetooth module and getting louder dBs, maximum dBs, more clarity. Personally, I'm gonna stick with the wireless system, less wires, simpler. That's just my opinion. Okay, hope you enjoyed. Okay, here are the three musketeers, starting with this giant, the sub two. Look at the difference of size, huge. When I saw the sub one, I took it out of the box because I had never seen it before. I just saw it on the web. 
it was it was tiny in comparison and again 35 30, 36 pounds lifted easily with one hand picked up I haven't put it in the car yet but it's it's going to be considerably easier than this this big boy the sub 2 and then here is the B1 module from the previous system from the model 2 I have the B2 module and this is the B1 very tidy I believe it's 30 pounds I wish Bose would make a a, a sub that small for the new Pro 32 system it's just wonderful it's so light and a lot of people especially uh, acoustic musicians were under the impression that these um, the B1 module sounded better than the B2. I don't know. I don't play acoustic guitar. But again, it's like Goldilocks. Papa Bear. There's Mama Bear. And there's the little baby. They're all great. But in my book, right here is our winner. Sub 1. Super portable. Super light. And surprisingly good base for its size. I'm gonna label it a real subwoofer, which is a compliment in my book. Okay, a couple of loose ends or a summary of this system. By the way, I put a CD on the floor there. It's a great CD, Roxy Music, Avalon. Uh, just to give you an idea how really tiny this sub, sub one is. And I put the uh, S1 Pro on top again to give you the proportion of the two next to each other. So I, I stated by wrapping up before that the the winner of that of those three subwoofers I showed you was the the sub one. I want want to emphasize that it's the winner when you consider portability, its weight, and the si and the sound for its size, but. You have to realize, I, I didn't intend to say the sub one outperforms the sub two, not by any margin. The sub two is is twi twice the performer of the sub one. It, it literally shakes the house where the sub one is just an excellent tight subwoofer, but really a, a different league. So I just wanted to emphasize that. Uh, the Personas, I forgot to mention, that it does need a uh, power source. So when you're looking for a power station like the Expert 400, that power station has three AC outlets. So uh, some, some of the power stations that you're gonna find with similar power only have one. So make sure uh, that's not a factor for you. I know I need at least two AC for this system, one for the subwoofer and one for the personas. The, L1, the, the sub one is 480 watts. The Pro 8 is 240 watts. So, so I mentioned that the two, uh, two Pro 8 systems would probably be better. And then I thought about it and I'm thinking maybe ne not necessarily. Um, I haven't compared them, so I, I wanna emphasize that. I haven't personally AB'd them. But uh, the sub one is twice the power with 480 watts. They do have the same racetrack woofer with the same size. And that I think is throwing some people off thinking the Pro 8 performs the same as the sub one, but it doesn't. Another important factor that you have to take into effect compared to the Pro 8 is the sub one has a um, separate volume control, which the Pro 8 doesn't have. And I really, <coughs> excuse me, I really, think that's an important feature where you can, I, I like to dial up my, my tops as loud as I feel comfortable for the, for the show and then bring up the bass to match. You can't do that with the Pro 8. It's just one volume control is covering the highs and the lows. So to me, the sub one with the separate and the sub two with the separate volume control is a big selling feature in my opinion. Another thing that I didn't mention, and is very, very important, is that the, the, Pro, the, sub, the Bose S1 Pro has 120 degrees dispersion. 
Now, this is in comparison to other typical, they call them point and shoot speakers. Your typical 12 inch speaker has a dispersion of 75 degrees. My favorite speaker in that type of speaker, the point and shoot is the QSC 8.2 and it has 105 degrees, which is considered very wide, but 105 degrees compared to 120 degrees of the S1 Pro is considerable. So what does dispersion mean? That means it will cover that much more audience to the left and right. And again, one speaker, many people are, are using only one S1 Pro, one speaker covering a larger area is, is a factor. Many people don't want to carry two speakers and the S1 Pro is, has the ability to cover the larger audience, very important. Again, the S1 Pro, I did mention before, it could be as a modular system where one speaker is all you need for a backyard party or a camping. So a lot of people don't want to carry a, a Pro 8, which is 40 pounds compared to 15.5 pounds. So the S1 Pro has certain advantages, selling features that that's why so many people are, are buying this, thousands of people. Another thing I didn't mention is the sub one could be paired with a second sub one to make a cardio, cardio mode, mode, sorry, cardio mode. And that means um, bass is projected to the front instead of the rear of the stage. Again, I've never tried that before, but that is a selling feature of the sub one. Okay, let me show you some things I, I looked up here. So again, this is a comparison of the two. Here is the L1 Pro 8 and 240 watts sub. And then we go over here to the, the sub one, 480 watts, twice the power. Again, and also the sub one goes down to 40 Hertz in comparison to the L1 Pro 45 Hertz. A subwoofer I didn't mention, and I do wanna mention all the options for the people that are starting from scratch, is this Fishman SA Sub 300. It's much cheaper, $400. And the specs, it's an eight inch subwoofer, eight inch woofer. It goes up to 109 dB in comparison to the sub one 123, which is, which is considerable difference. And here is the greatest selling feature at the bottom. It only weighs 28.7 pounds, less than 30 pounds. So again, the sub one is 36 pounds. So this is the lightweight, but it doesn't perform like the sub one. But if you're looking for the, the lightest, lightest subwoofer, I, I have, and that performs, it does perform nicely. It just doesn't perform, it doesn't have the base output of the sub one. It's a, again, sub one is another step up, but this is the lightest that I have found. Okay, you notice I put the uh, personas on top of the sub one. I didn't want to do that because of vibration's sake, but the, the mount I had shown you, the, uh, I believe it's called the Stage Stage Ninja. It, first of all, it's, 600, it's sixty dollars, which is not so cheap. It's made for a tablet. It's made to hold up an iPad, and I kind of jerry rigged it to hold the personas. And I, I, at this point, I can't recommend it. it it's kind of loose, and it, it almost fell. So I'm I'm not going to feel comfortable using that setup anymore. But it's a great tablet holder. For the gigging musicians out there and DJs doing small events, the figures that I've seen on the web, and again, these are not figures that I've come up with through uh, actual experience with audiences. One S1 Pro alone can handle up to 50 people approximately. The S1 Pro, when you add the sub one, you're pushing up to, two, up, up to 100 people. Now, my question is, how many people will you be able to use to go up to once you have two S1 Pros paired up with the Sub-1? I'm not sure, maybe 150, maybe maximum 200, I am not sure. Maybe someone on the web who's tried something similar can tell us more accurate figures. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. 
I have other videos coming. This is Bill signing out.